Um, my name is Courtney Callahu. I grew up outside of Edmonton. I had the opportunity to be part of a woman or <laughs> women in science program at the University of Alberta called WISES. And I worked with Dr. Rena Freed looking at the ecosystem of a, a lake in northern Alberta called Lac La Biche. And we collected samples on the lake and we discovered that there was too much fertilizer from the agriculture in the area going into the lake and that was causing all of the algae blooms and not making it very pleasant well, and for anyone to swim in and also killing the fish. Um, so that was a problem. Um, I really liked the summer job though. It was a lot of fun. I mean, you got to hang out with everybody on the lake. But when I went to university, I liked chemistry and math better. So I started being a material scientist in my undergraduate and then I started doing my PhD at Dalhousie in Halifax with Joseph Zwanziger. My aim uh, in the glass science world is to relate the molecular structure of glass to its physical properties. So I hope by understanding what the origin of toughness and strength and durability in glass, I can use and predict uh, what I know to use less of the glass. People don't, even though glass is a, a green material, it's recyclable, it's pretty inert, we still use a lot of energy to make it and melt it. And if we can, and a lot, unfortunately a lot of the sources of energy that we use right now aren't green, they aren't sustainable. So until then, something that we can help to, you know, to reduce the impact on the environment is just use less energy in creating the glass. So when I went to France, um, I worked with a gentleman called Jean Rochaud-Roulet at the Université de Rennes. I would like to go back and hopefully uh, it will encourage me to try harder to learn French um, because I feel like maybe France doesn't know how good of a country it is. <laughs> I also was impressed at how well funded the French lab was. I don't know if every university has as large of a glass science institute, but there were two or three floors uh, that had everything that you would um, need. And like at Dalhousie, uh, it's only really a group of us that do glass, and it's not a whole building, which is what I felt like it was at France. So it was nice to collaborate with other people that do similar similar things and know or have ex some expertise in the field. Uh, I know what equipment I would buy if I was using it academically. Um, but I guess I, I really like history, so I'm, I would like to see other civilizations. And so I, I think that's a generic answer to want to go traveling, but I, that's my first experience leaving Canada, and, and I would really like to see other places. I had a bit of trouble with this, thinking about this question because I re always remember being, wanting to be a scientist, but never never thinking that I couldn't be a scientist because I was a woman. It never crossed my mind. And I guess I realized that I have strong women in my family, that my mom, she's a teacher, and my aunt's a social worker, and, and it, you know, I never thought that there was a barrier because I was a woman. And what I, I, what I have to realize is that not everybody has those people in their family or surrounding them. And so if I can be someone that is a role model and that they actually, you know, that changes their mind or inspires them, then I would be really honored <laughs> if I can do that. And looking at my mom's age, I mean, she's told me stories about where it was discouraged for women to take physics. It would be at the same time as uh, where you learn to cook, like the same class. So a lot of women wouldn't go into physics for that reason. And I guess I don't always realize what she had to go through or how far it's come along and how there are a lot more women in science. And it must be because of programs like this, where we got used to seeing women in higher positions and you know we don't question it and we're comfortable with it. I guess one of my goals is to become a professor at a university uh, because I, I never really had very many women professors. It was always men. It seemed kind of a bit like an old boys club, um, but and I and I always thought was that was because there wasn't a lot of women who were doing their undergraduate 30 years ago. 
that would have the education to be in that position. But I think that there might always be less women in those positions because if you want tenure, you do have to sacrifice you know, your, your time until you're 35 or 40 when at that point you can't really start thinking of making a family. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I guess I feel like I would still like to be a professor and if I get to that point and I would like children, I, I'm really considering adoption. <laughs> and maybe, maybe I can inspire other women if they see that they have a professor in their undergraduate because I only recall maybe two, two women that were in those positions. I hope that I inspire other women if they you know, need a role model around them. <laughs>